Welcome to this Overland Traveller series on the world's longest public track, the Canning Stock Route. Join us as we tick this bucket list adventure off over 16 days, four wheel driving 1700 kilometres over some spectacular landscapes, finding incredible camps and having our fair share of mishaps. Enjoy as we take you along for the ride in our weekly episodes. Episode one, you've got to start somewhere. Feels like you're doing something cool when you flag up. So we just obviously stopped in the community. The shop is actually closed between 12 and two. So again, just check and that's weekdays, weekends. I didn't actually look at the sign. There is water in town. We haven't filled up. We probably we're, have- We're pretty much full. We're not, we've we'll got be like 90%. 80 litres. Yeah, so in order to get water, there is like an office building that you need to contact someone and they'll give you access to the water. We did also see a hose out front of that building. Didn't see anyone, but if you're coming through, just have a look. The store is really well stocked, so if you need supplies, you'll probably be able to grab something. Whatever you need, um, yeah, there's heaps of stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go find camp and then hit the road tomorrow. Our first camp for the night isn't far from Billaluna. It's a spot called Stretch Lagoon. And with the recent rains, there was plenty of water and bird life. Daily dance, daily dance, daily dance, yeah. Daily dance. All right. <coughs> Just uh, sun setting. <laughs> Origin is starting. And uh, it's time of the day for daily, daily dance. dance. So, it's time to hand the hat over. Now, what are we going to put forward? I have one. <laughs> Minutes after I got my hat, Ellen, <laughs> Ellen said... Because we were discussing, we were like, oh, but what if nothing really silly happens? And I was like, even if it's something trivial, we'll make it happen. And then as soon as I said that, Ellen goes, I love trivia. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't hear the L part. <laughs> it was an easy mistake. <laughs> Would anyone else like to put a accusation yeah, forward? I do. <laughs> Cam went to drive away with his, what's that thing called? Trundle draw. Yeah, the trundle draw. On the crate. Open. Day, yeah. Didn't actually leave. But you were going to. I thought about it, but I probably would have sat in that seat and walked out before I drove off. Oh, this is speculation. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But I didn't move though, did I? We soft, so stopped it's, you from it's, damage. It's one versus the other, isn't it? I've got another one then. Can I say two? Yeah. What have I done there? Matt, no. <laughs> <laughs> Matt got his left and right mixed up. He did. Yep. I yeah, did but remember that. I'll accept that. Or something I feel like silly. That's way worse than me mistaking trivial for trivia. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think so. I suppose we have to vote. Mm -hmm. 
tough one. I vote Matt. All right. <laughs> well, do you, Ellen? Well, you haven't had the daily dunce yet, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> I like trivia. <laughs> Who would like to vote for that? Personally, we do have well, trivia. I would. It was pretty funny. We do have trivia cards. <laughs> we can play it tomorrow. So who's going to vote for trivia? I'm for the trivia. All right, Cameron. Sorry, Ellen. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, that's enough. <laughs> the daily dance. <laughs> Here you go, Ellen. Yeah. Guys, with me shared anyway. Get <laughs> <laughs> out the back. Rapunzel, oh, let it go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It goes with the jersey. It does, yeah. It actually does. <laughs> <laughs> show, show me the back, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> that was <sick>. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs>- stretch lagoon now it was a really nice camp spot and there's a really nice story here today starting well we are technically on the canyon but we're doing more of it so we're really excited it feels like day one you excited yep I am you ready I'm ready off we go in the convoy we have Michael going first in the truck then us next and Adrian and Ellen and Kim Court uh, we're sending the truck first because apparently the truck is quite overgrown. And the pain on the truck's not very good. <laughs> yeah, he's, so he's, he's happy, kept it bad for however long for the canning. And um, he's obviously the most visible, so that's why he's up front. There is quite a lot of traffic on the canning this year, so yeah, having that is quite a good thing to have. One thing we quickly realised was just how varied the landscapes are on the canning. They seem to change without you noticing. You could be in a vast open plain one moment and then find yourself driving through a beautiful stand of desert oaks. These changing landscapes become quite a theme on this track. at our first well it's not one of the official wells on the canning I think but it's called Cholga well so it's not numbered usually there wouldn't be water here but there is a bit of water I think just from a recent rain event so yeah interesting just to pull over and have a look we kind of want to like do as much as we can while we're here because you know getting out here was a bit of an effort so we want to do it properly another thing is on the 70 series behind us two of them have bush wraps ours and Adrian's and Cam and Courts doesn't have bush wraps Bushwraps is a protective film that you can put over your car, so um, it's, they come in kits essentially, so they do them for heaps of different four-wheel drives. You put it on and it protects your paint. So what we're going to do is have a good film of our car, like my, our car, with the bush wraps on, and then Cam and Court's car with the bushwraps off, and then we'll do it at the end of the canning, 
and we can see the difference and to see if the bull traps does anything. <laughs> so I'm really glad we got it on because I've heard it's very overgrown. Um, so yeah, we'll film that now. Right, we just pulled over here. Uh, we're just making a quick cuppa. The truck's in front of us, and uh, he's going. He has to go pretty slow. The corrugations are pretty bad, and the speed where he's sort of working is probably about idling in second for us. And we we want to jump ahead of him now because cruisers can um, sort of float over the top of it. So we're kind of just waiting, and then we'll float over the top and just go a bit faster. Around 50 k's, it just gets better. So uh, yeah but we just have a quick cover. Pretty protected here in the sun. How's your neck? Oh, beautiful. Shaded. It's going to be Shaded sweaty as. though. <laughs> all, all juicy yeah. for the next person. Yeah. No. Nice. If you got a newer four wheel drive and you care about it, <laughs> um, it's definitely worth getting this like bush wraps or like protective clear film. Like it would be, I'd be cringing so much more if I didn't have it. I just know. I just know that's protecting it, so like it's still like oh gosh, but it's making it a lot nicer, a lot easier. starting to get pretty overgrown and we are noticing uh, yeah, some nice uh, bush stripes happening, especially well, on the car without the uh, bush wraps it's happening. We're pretty good aren't we? I'm actually very impressed so far. Yeah. It's working, it's definitely doing its job. But uh, one thing we want to do is we've seen a few people do this. Got some rope, just some cheap rope from Bunnings. Going to tie it to our bull bar and then run it up to our roof rack. And just gives you a bit of a barrier, see Adrian's doing it there. Just gives you a bit of a barrier, um, especially on your pillars. Your pillars really get smashed apparently. So my pillars actually don't have any bush wraps on them. So I want to keep them good. And I also want to keep the bonnet nice. I do have a patch on my bonnet, but it doesn't go all the way back here. And the bonnet's so pretty, isn't it? It's a pretty bonnet. It's, it's the so sexiest pretty. bonnet. Look at that hood. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Give the cars every chance they can get. Adrian's definitely thought ahead here. What have you got on top of your rhino rack, mate? So they're just little rhino rack tie down eyelets and so we'll go with the rope first i've actually made up tailed Ooh, stainless steel strap so we're going to start with the rope see how that goes and if that breaks or fails we'll go to steel cable stainless steel cable right, Matt, that's it. Okay. how's it going cam good we've just left well 50 after scratching the car a little bit. So we just put some Couple rope, drops. rope from the bull bar up to the mirrors. And it seems to be working, but we'll wait and see when we get out of the car and have a look-sees. And we're off to a well 49 now. What are you doing, mate? Oh, it's set up well. On oh, an angle. Slide out angle. Carrying a fair bit of weight up top. You sure? Multi jerry can holder up here. Not a particularly old car. No. 
was going on here? I'm thinking ladder access to a rooftop tent maybe? Or someone needed that part? What I for lunch we're having um what are they? Rocket. Panini like Turkish bread with rocket, prosciutto, pesto, cheese. Sun dried tomatoes. Sun dried tomatoes. Bloody nice. Um we're at well 49. Well 49, it's pretty overgrown. Stuff's copping a bit of a pizzling on the car, but it's all holding up pretty well. Obviously just pop the awning out for lunch, which is just nice to have a bit of shade in this kind of weather. This is when you use your awnings when it's hot and sunny like this. So nice just to get it out. This one's from Destination 4 Drive. Got the telescoping arms, heaps of room. Mm. It's nice and quick and easy. This is well 49, one of the wells that has been restored and could potentially provide fresh water, but it's worth checking first. Touch of salty. Big six yeah. yeah. That's the 370 series and a truck at the title. So we just passed a convoy that we're heading northbound. Um, and they were going southbound and they got to well 46 and uh, one of the Utes in the convoy, it was an older Mazda BT50, I think. We noticed it driving past, I said, I think that thing has a snap chassis. And Adrian asked, oh, one of you Utes have a snap chassis? He said, yeah, yeah, we uh, snapped it somewhere near Well 46 on a smaller sand dune, and they tried to patch it up best they could and decided to head back and head out. Um, so it just goes to show, I was just saying to Holly, you sort of hear about those things happening, but you don't really see it much, but yeah, here we are, Canning Stock Route. Pretty typical story, it was a older ute, overloaded, a lot of weight over the rear axle, behind it, snapped a chassis, and that's your trip over, and you're limping out, so, yeah, it's uh, no joke. And they said on the radio, they said, oh, we've done it before, and um, we know there's much bigger sand dunes coming up, so we uh, don't want to risk it any further. It's, Fair enough, so yes, sobering. <laughs> so we're passing through some really dense, overgrown shrubs on the track at the moment. Um, we've actually just broken the mirror on the passenger side of the car. Um, as it sort of got bent down, a stick's come up off, or a branch has come up and smashed the mirror. But, oh well, it happens, hey? It does. Yeah. We're planning on replacing them anyway, so this might be our sign to get some new mirrors. Holly spotted just the faintest little drip of diesel out of Matt's and there's sub and where the weld comes in there's just a little hairline crack that's developed so um, bush fix 101 soap so yeah bar of soap and you can rub it on and it should stop your leak and I mean we'll just keep an eye on it and hopefully it doesn't get bigger so a bit disappointing it's a brown davis tank so it's it's good tank or well, reputable company like yeah it's a bit of a shame I mean it's brand new so yeah, watch it eyes. we're gonna have to check the mounts because what it could have happened the tank rises up to get the most room in a troopy 
and where it comes down, it's got a flat section right at a right angle. You just have to check those mounts to see whether it's all good. Shifting. Yeah. Yep. All right, so get ready to drop the soap on and it's stopped the leak, so that's great. Um, it's got a little bush fix. So yeah, look, I'm not going to jump to conclusions what, what's up with the tank. It's right in the weld there, so uh, could have been any, any number of things, um, not just a faulty tank. Uh, so we'll get it looked at in Perth, I'm sure. Um, obviously, Brown Dave's going to have a pretty good warranty and everything like that, so we'll, uh, we'll take it in when we get to Perth and have a look, but we'll just keep an eye on it and um, yeah, should be fine. We had a big day in the track and we needed to find camp. The one we were driving into was both unexpected and spectacular. So tune into next week's episode to find out why.